Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. Nested along Oregon's rugged southern coast, the charming town of Bandon is no stranger to earthquakes. And far offshore, the Pacific Ocean, yeah, there's regular rattling of earthquakes in that region, with events often referred to Bandon due to the proximity. While these offshore quakes do grab headlines, they're pale in comparison to the real danger lurking closer to shore. The Cascadia subduction zone, which I got drawn out in blue. Two recent events, a magnitude 4.5 and a 4.3, occurred early this morning and late yesterday. Here's the area for the 4.5 and the 4.3. Stick with me. I'm going to dive more into these recent events. Hi, everyone. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for watching my videos. I humbly ask that you subscribe. I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to Ginger, Stephen, and Julie for PayPal donations or bought buying me cups of coffee. Thank you very much. You are God's angels doing his work. As of late December, recent tremors serve as a timely reminder to prepare for what could be one of North America's most devastating natural disasters. The Cascadia subduction zone stretches over 600 miles from Northern California to Vancouver Island where the Juan de Fuca plate dives beneath the North American plate and right off Bandon's coastline ties the southern segment of this mega thrust fault. Most recent earthquakes near Bandon occur much farther out along the Blanco Fracture Zone, a highly active transform fault system. It's about 230, maybe 300 kilometers or 125 to 185 miles west of the coast. Here I have an image of the Cascadia subduction zone and the Juan de Fuca plate and the um, cross section of that area, um, the Blanco fracture zone. And you can see here how we have the um, crust of the earth subducting underneath the North American plate. This zone features strike slip motion where plates slide past each other horizontally. It produces frequent moderate quakes but rarely causes significant onshore damage or tsunamis. In 2024 and 2025, notable events including a magnitude 6.0 to a 6.1 occurred uh, um, in October of 2024. And in um, September, of this year, there was a magnitude 5.9. Some of the larger events I do have marked out for the Blanco Fracture Zone. Here you can see in 2018, there was a 6.2, um, also a 6.0, and the 5.1, which happened in July of this year. These quakes were weakly felt by coastal residents with dozens of people submitting Did You Feel It reports to the USGS Did You Feel It website. No damage occurred and no tsunamis were triggered. Similar, um, smaller magnitude threes and fours happened regularly, with forms often occurring in the Blanco fracture zone. Onshore activity near Bandon remains minimal. Only small, often unfelt reports in recent years. I do have a 2.7 here posted, and that occurred on November 9th. And then we got one a little bit farther south, which occurred on August of 2023. I don't have all the uh, reports here, but it gives you an indication. Also drawn out in blue is a tear of the Juan de Fuca plate as it subducts underneath the uh, North American plate. And you can see it extends pretty far out. The offshore rumbles contrast sharply with the quiet but ominous Cascadia subduction zone. Unlike the Blanco fracture zone, 
the Cascadia subduction zone in this area is locked and building immense strain without frequent small earthquakes. The last full rupture was on January 26, 1700, a magnitude 9.0 monster that generated a tsunami reaching all the way to Japan, where there they recorded an orphan tsunami, as they called it, with no local earthquake to explain it. Geological evidence show about 19 to maybe 40 such full or partial ruptures in the past 10,000 years, averaging every 400 to 600 years for a big one. Scientists estimate a 37% chance of a magnitude 8.0 earthquake or a 10 to 15% chance for a magnitude 9.0 full rupture in the, you know, in the next 50 years. But their estimates are often wrong. Here is an example of the 4.5 earthquake that occurred um, today, universal time, and we'll come over to their estimated uh, evaluation of what another earthquake could happen. They said there was only a 3% chance of a aftershock of a magnitude 4, four or greater, but there was in fact a magnitude 4.3. They're now saying that there is only less than 1% chance of a larger event of a magnitude 4 or greater and a 6% chance of a magnitude 3 or greater. So that just shows you how, yeah, they're greatly underestimated. Yes, we do know that they have machines that can create earthquakes, but to actually predict an earthquake, they don't have, you know, the ability to do that. If there was a partial or full rupture, uh, community, coastal communities like Bandon, the impact would be catastrophic. Ground shaking would last at least four to seven minutes, uh, shaking back and forth, only about three feet. Uh, yeah, can you imagine constant shaking for four to seven minutes? The ground would liquefy. There would be landslides. And I often talked about well, because of the Cascadia subduction zone going down underneath the North American plate, there is areas of land that has risen because of the subduction. Those areas would quickly drop. The 1700 earthquake, the great earthquake of a magnitude 9.0, yeah, there was whole islands off the coast of Washington that completely disappeared as they sunk under the sea. If it was a smaller earthquake and they had liquefaction, yeah, the, the ground would turn to quicksand. There in the Caribbean where they had large past earthquakes, people walking along areas of uh, light sand and soil, they actually got buried up to their necks and died from the liquefaction. Some coastal land could be permanently altered or lost into the sea. The Blanco Fracture Zone quakes are not a precursor to a Cascadia subduction zone event, but um, that's because uh, these two areas operate independently from each other. But it is showing how stress is building because of the movement of the plates. Residents should be prepared for at least two weeks without services. You need to stock up on emergency kits, secure your homes, no evacuation routes to higher grounds, and stay informed. Yeah, the beautiful beaches there in Bandon and along the coast of Oregon and California and Washington, they may be beautiful, might be really nice to live there, but they come with a risk. Yeah, another reminder to be prepared. So what are your thoughts? Please put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your support. And I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.